Hi, Kevin Green here. Welcome to Pathways to the Past. Today I'm down here at the Jackson County Visitor Center, which is housed in this nicely restored Southern Indiana Freight Depot. But today's video isn't about the, this depot or the uh, Southern Indiana Railroad. Uh, that's up and coming video, but I'm still doing research on that. It's, takes quite a bit of research for these railroad videos. But today's video, I'm going to be talking about those railroad tracks over there behind it, which is the east-west line through Seymour. Now in my very first video that I did, I talked about that line, the Ohio and Mississippi Railroad. But I've, in doing research, every now and then I come across the interesting tidbit that is worthy of a video of its own and today I'm going to talk about an event that happened on concerning that railroad in 1871 pretty fascinating story so I'll sit down and we'll get started on that so as a quick review the east-west railroad that comes through Seymour was built um, as the Ohio and Mississippi Railroad um, because it was uh, going from the Ohio River at Cincinnati west to the Mississippi River at St. Louis. Um, it came into Seymour from the east in 1857 and by 1860 it was complete uh, all the way from Cincinnati to St. Louis at least to the east side of the Ohio or the Mississippi River at St. Louis. Now if you go measure the distance between the rails of the track behind me today you'll find that they measure four feet eight and one half inches that's called the standard gauge um, which is the standard for most all railroads across the united states today now if you do a internet search about the standard gauge railroad track you'll find an uh, interesting story that may or may not be true, which which traces the uh, distance back to uh, ancient Roman ox carts and the wheel distance that they use. It's a fascinating story. Like I said, it may or may not be actually facts, but um, when these tracks east and west through Seymour were put in in 1857, um, it was what was called a broad gauge railroad the railroads, it was the early days of railroading all across the United States at the time. And the, while a lot of the railroads went with a standard gauge, it wasn't standardized across the United States. So this line to, through Seymour was what they called a broad gauge. That means that the r distance between the rails on that line was six feet across. The idea with this, I'm not sure if it was true or not, but it was advertised as, as providing a smoother ride for the rail, rail cars. Um, I think it probably for sure would allow them to haul heavier loads more stable. But as more and more railroads um, adopted the standard gauge, there was a bit of a problem because uh, freight traffic that would be hauled on this line if it went beyond the boundaries of this rail line um, onto a standard gauge line, it would be necessary for the freight to be unloaded from the broad gauge cars into standard gauge cars, net gauge cars to continue underway. That took extra time and transportation and took more manpower. So by 1870, 1870 they decided to uh, change it from broad gauge to the standard gauge. Now the entire length of the line was 340 miles and because they were moving from, they're actually narrowing the gauge by uh, over 15 inches so they figured it would be necessary to actually move both rails toward the center seven and three quarter inches to get to the gauge. The reason for that was that if they shifted one rail over to the side, that would put the loads off center on the bridges 
and also the uh, water tanks which were already built to service the locomotives and to refill them with water were centered on the tracks and it would make those useless as well. They'd have to change all the water tanks. So it was necessary for to move basically 680 miles of rail in seven and three quarters inches. So how long do you think in 1871 it would take uh, for that to happen? You think maybe a week or two weeks maybe? I think you'd be surprised at the answer. So the changing of the gauge happened on July the 21st, 1871. And on, they started early that morning. Um, there was, now there was a lot of preparation that was made ahead of time. They put uh, tools and spikes all along the entire route. Um, they hired over 2,000 men to accomplish this uh, feat. Um, they paid each of the men uh, 40 cents an hour, which seemed to me for the time period seemed to me to be a pretty good wage. Um, I did a um, inflation calculator on the internet to see what that would compare to today. And I was kind of surprised to find it only equaled about $10 an hour today, which it seems to me like it would be more than that. But anyway, that's what it said. So what they did, they went the entire length and they see the way that a rail is held in place, there's wooden cross ties which go across. And on either side of the rail on each cross tie, there's spikes that are dri driven into the cross tie to hold the rail in place. So what they did, they went along the entire route and they measured and put the in inner spikes in place for both rails all the way through and then they measured over how far they needed to for the outer spike and they pre-drilled holes into each tie so that when they moved the rails over all they they would snug them up against the inner spikes and then have somebody come along and drop the new spikes into the pre-drilled holes and then they would pound them into place so they were pretty smart thinking about this so they I mentioned they hired over 2,000 men what they did they divided the 340 miles into five mile sections of track. So there were 68 sections and each section was assigned about 40 men to work. And they started at the outer edges of that five mile section and worked to the and met in the center. So basically you had 20 men um, completing two and a half miles of, of changing these rails. So back to the question, how long do you think it took them to do this? They accomplished this entire feet of changing the rails for 340 miles in seven hours. That's just amazing to me. If, if you had a, a, that task to do today, I'm not sure that it could be done in seven hours time. But it's pretty amazing what they were able to do back at that time. So it's just a little short video. I thought you'd be interested in hearing that story. I hope you enjoyed it. Make some comments if you will and, and tell me what you think. Thank you. Bye.